So that's Andre Ward. He's decked out in black and white, and uh, Sullivan Barrera is in red and white. This is the former undisputed 168-pound world champ. And Barrera is the undefeated light heavyweight with a huge, huge amateur background. Box. All right, so here we go, round number one. Barrera's first two uh, attempts a little bit on the wide side. Very confident as Ward moving up. Look at the body of Barrera, man. He looks in great shape. He looks so much bigger and stronger than Andre. Andre's got the perfect body for a, a fighter. Yeah, Barrera, sort of heavy-handed, slower than Ward. These are two guys very well schooled in the amateur world. So let's see who forces the other guy out of that comfort zone. Well, right now, uh, Ward looks quicker. He's feigning, he's stomping the foot. Trying to see what movements he can make Barrera do. Nobody's really opened up. Wood makes him walk in with a nice stiff uh, left jab. Barrera wants to try to get the inside. Nice job by Ward, forcing him on the outside and on the inside to hook the arm. And then he got caught with a free hand. Trying to feel each other out as best they can. Barrera cuts loose with that big right hand, but it misses. He set that up with a jab, which did get in. And for Barrera, so get, get the jab going, and the butterflies will stop, and it will get into a... Watch them cameras. Keep them cameras back. Regular match for these guys. Right now, they got the crowd, Keep the big lights, back, and everything Rory. like that. Barrera hasn't let fly with a big right hand. As I say that, he reaches with the right hand downstairs. Barrera in the white trunks facing you. Watch your hands, guys. Watch your hands. Kind of a look of concern on his face. And Andre, very, very smart in the ring and outside the ring, for that matter. He's a bright guy. Barrera's the guy that decided he'd take this fight instead of fighting Kovalev. Big gamble for him, but he doesn't consider it that way. As Kathy Duva said, you know, this is a money fight for Barrera. And at age 70, uh, and age 34, rather, you know, this time, he's got to test himself, see if he's in the elite. You've got to take some money if they're putting it in front of you now with the idea that maybe you get two, but make sure you get one. You never know if the other opponent you're lined up for, if that fight's actually going to happen. Ten seconds, yes, I mean, not a lot between them here in the first round. Barrera. No 10 point loss for us. A little bit of a lean for Barrera for me. A little bit. Well, he fight a defensive fight now because he can't throw with the speed. So you keep the speed on him, okay? Now, when he's bending forward like that, you can step over, okay? Step to your strong side and dig something to the side, okay? So, you see when you're going down, he's dipping, he's dipping down with his head, right? With both his hands down. So show him tiny there, and then step over. And so he wants to do it good down the top. No. So show him some tactics, and then step over and drop the body shot to the strong side, okay? So right that was back. a very close first round as we listened to the corner of Andre, Virgil Hunter, Jacob Durand, Edward Jackson, Robert Garcia. Dave gave Barrera that very close round, and I gave it to Ward, so I expected the judges uh, would see it uh, about the same way. They may be split on it or one way or the other. But whatever it was, it was a close round. Now let's see if it opens up a little bit more here. Watch your feet. Welcome Barrera, to the they told him to get a, a no, lot no, more no, aggressive. Stop! Get the Let's go. Now you said, watch your heads, watch your heads, guys. Cat and mouse game here in the early going, Dave. Well, not much separating them in terms of height. A couple inches for Ferrer, but not 
enough of a differentiator. They both have the idea of the jab first and then operate. That's their amateur background. So somebody will have to force a style and get out of that natural flow and do something. And that's when this fight will open up. Well, to me, Ward looks quicker on his feet than Barrera. Barrera sort of plods into him. Looks like he wants to load up a shot. He's got a real strong jab and loves to throw a power shot. And he money. feels that he's stronger. You heard Caiz say, get out, you know, your hands are free, keep going. I'm not going to separate from your hands are free. Very similar to the first round so far. Not a lot separating them. Little body shot downstairs. Right hand land. There's a little uh, puckiness by the left eye of Barrera. All right, hands up. I don't know if that's from the head of him. Some punches of uh, Andre. Don't hit him in the back of the head. Halfway through this, the second round. Both cheeks a little puffy of Barrera. Get your hand out, Andre. Barrera more or less forcing the fight. Clips him with the right hand as Andre pulls back out. Hands are free. Mano Lira. Let him go. They both want to do the same thing. Jab first. <laughs> that's, not only do they want it, that's exactly what they're trying to do, Dave. And they're, they're, that's what got them here. So they're staying with that until it gets taken away. So if the fight is going to be cautious for a while, it's because that's what got these guys to the dance. A lot on the line for both fighters. A mega fight for either one of them with Kovalev. All right, stop! Break, deep breath. Ward has made it absolutely clear to me that he's going to take another fight before that. Side of 30 seconds to go, and this is the second round. Take a better man than me to score these rounds. Yes, I will go. 10 seconds. Stop at the bell. Party like a fan. Barrera landing at his right hand, then he goes to the body again. Oh, Ward's hand is something at the end. You know, I lean towards Ward in the first round, so I'm going to give that one because I can't make up my mind of Barrera to even it up because there's not there's not anything between them. I'm going to do the same thing the opposite way. <laughs> so we've both got it even after uh, two rounds. Now I'll credit Ward for that flurry at the end because it wasn't really much before that. And that's how this fight is setting up. Uh, caution first, and then we'll see how it breaks out. Well, that fight's going to break out here, but they're both being very cautious in the early going. Barrera said there's no way that Ward's going to have the power at 175 that he had at 68. Here he came in. Good left hook by Ward. The second one was even better. Temple and then the jaw. And that's why you lean towards Andre. But right before that, before that replay, Barrera had hit him. So, hey, we get it even after two. How we got there is different, but that's the situation. We're in the third round now, the Oracle. Heads, uh, heads, uh, they're going to watch out for that. Raul Kies, uh, Kies, rather, uh, Senior has, you know, tried to watch it as best he can. But it's the style of these two fighters. Talked about the same thing they want to do, the jab, then dip. Get inside, and they're both leaning forward with the head. So they'll be close to each other. And maybe a slight bit of hand speed in favor of Andre Ward. Not a lot of difference right now at this stage. So far, the power of Barrera, you know, he's got uh, 12 knockouts and 17 fights. Well, he's uh, got a pretty good ratio. But he hasn't fought anybody in this class whatsoever. Yeah, I just as I saw the power there of uh, Barrero when he threw that shot the way Ward, even though it just caught him in the shoulder again, Ward kind of walking away, stumbling a little bit. And then show you some of the power that uh, Barrera has. He'll take the standing eight count. That was one of those flash knockdowns that surprised him. Nonetheless, Barrera goes down. So now we know 
it that, in fact, Andre Ward has got the power at 175. Let's see if this ignites Barrera at all. Sometimes it'll do that to a fighter. Nice stiff jab by Andre. He ramped up Ward as far as throwing more, seeing what effect that knockdown had, and making sure that Barrera is okay if he's not going to go after him. He's going to make him pass the test. Well, Barrera's mouth is open right now, and he's second win. But I'll tell you this, Andre Ward uh, wants to mix it up with him now that he didn't do any of the first or second round. But this is a 10-8 round to this far with uh, about 38 seconds to go. And now you see the hand speed of Andre. Barrera comes back and tries to land something heavy, but he can't. He caught Barrera as Barrera was coming in. Real solid shot. And now uh, Andre seems to be landing more punches with, with better accuracy at this stage here in the third round. Very wide stance from Barrera, which makes it hard for him to land a right hand power shot. Also very wide punches now. Stop at the bell. And don't keep firing after the bell, but that's a big round for Ward. It's a 10-8 round with a knockdown. Let's take a look here as Ward will back up, land it to the temple area. A fabled equilibrium shot. It doesn't always have to be hard if it's on the right shot. He got him on the right spot with that. He was against the ropes, found an opening to the most vulnerable area. And that is what put Barrera down. They're loving it. Right on the temple. Here we go, round four. Well, let's see what Ward can do. You heard uh, Sullivan Barrera, his uh, trainer, Abel Sanchez, who, by the way, has Gennady Golovkin as well. Trying to juice up his man now here. Herrera settled on again, is waiting, waiting, waiting. Ward gets off first, Dave. You talked about in the first couple of rounds, they both had the idea of getting off first with that jab, and right now it's Andre Ward that's doing it. And all the screaming that uh, Abel Sanchez did uh, with his fighter, uh, Sullivan Barrera, it really hasn't ignited him that much. Maybe he just wants him to throw more power shots. We'll see. Well, yeah, whatever Abel Sanchez tells him, the fact for Barrera is that he was down, and it's it's cast some doubt in him as far as getting his comfort zone back, getting the confidence, knowing when he should fire. Takes a little time to get back. And that's why it is Ward getting off first here and only in some of these situations. Ward is a, a terrific fighter in that he picks his shots. He's very accurate. You know, uses the jab properly. That time he loaded up the left hook. Backed off and took a shot and gets right back in the pocket and starts throwing punches again. When he reaches with a jab like that, it's just positioning for the right hand. Looking to try and get that left hand over the outstretched left hand. Instead, he goes for a jab that time. Halfway through round number four. This is a home game for Andre Ward. He lives uh, here in Oakland, California. This is his home. And the crowd has filled this Oracle Arena to come out and see him fight. So far, they're happy because he had uh, Barrera down in the last round. And even when not a lot is happening in this round, it is worth controlling what occurs because as they get close like this, he just pops the jet. Nothing else there, just pop the jet. Jab, move, he's done that close to 10 times in the last minute or so. Well, and that has been the separator in this round. Well, the difference uh, so far from what I can see is speed. Even, even that wasn't a real heavy punch that caught uh, Barrera when he got knocked down. The speed of it was there, and you know, it was right in the proper spot, an accurate pinpoint accuracy in terms of hitting him in the temple bump. Temple of Doom. 30 seconds ago on the fourth. 
not a big round one way or the other, but it's a ward that's uh, the ring general. He's the guy getting off first. He's the guy getting that jab through there. Clearly, the hand speed and foot speed right, of uh, Andre Ward is superior to Barrera. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell. Put it like a punter. A few seconds remaining, and this is the fourth. Not a big round for Andre, but I think he did enough. And he risked getting a point taken away. Okay. He said, apologize. That's the worst thing that happens. That's okay. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> the referee. Now, you're talking about a guy who's called 10,000 fights. And there was our guy say, hey, apologize there. <laughs> Tell him you didn't you mean it. Between shots, okay? Don't forget your glove with a flick. Send the jab through, you know, where his glove. And roll your head off center when you're using your power jab, okay? You go hit him with that. Power. Bam! Look at that target. And then roll out, okay? That's enough, baby. You're going to see the Deep breath. Come on, happy. There they go. The look of concern on the face of Sullivan Barrera, look of confidence on the face of Andre Ward. As we move to the fifth round, this is scheduled for 12. The no world title on the line. Keep it clean. Oh, Kiez Senior says, keep it clean, guys. It's clean, but both the guys threw punches after the uh, bell to end the fourth round. This is round five of the Oracle in Oakland, California. Colonel Bach Sheridan here with Dave Bunch Kempwar principles. Andre Ward, the former 168 pound champion of the world, moving up tonight to 175. So far, he's successful. We're seeing more in the foot speed now for Andre Ward. Pivoting, taking some shots, moving in behind the jab. Good foot feet adjustment and then setting up shots. He's on the target and launching more quickly. Right, the Cuban fighters. Um, have always been technical sort of fighters, but Ortiz, the heavyweight, and this guy, they're not like that. These guys go offensive first. So, you know, th he's thinking of trying to take this guy out with something heavy. He plants his feet, he throws his high shots, but the quickness of uh, Andre is the difference in the fight so far, even in the knockdown. In the knockdown, and now with the, with the foot speed, he's getting positioned. So even before a punch is being lost, he's in position to either get off first or slip the jab and fire his shot. Look how close Ward is to Barrera now as opposed to earlier rounds. He's right on top. Yeah, and he throws the left hand trying to move in, looking to throw that right. When he paws off like that, right hand will be behind it soon. Also, he's very slick. Watch him with the right hand. When when Barrera tries to get off with his left hand, he sort of catches it and smothers the punch. Carries it away. And the Holyfield was a great guy, but isn't that very impressive? Ward in the black trunks to the right of your screen, and the red and white is uh, Solomon Barrera. Barrera is the undefeated light heavyweight. Under a minute to go now here in the fifth round. Not a lot of difference in this round, except the accuracy of Ward. Barrera missing a lot. Ward with short stuff on the inside and then getting out of harm's way. Yeah, Ward almost always seems to get a piece of him where Barrera misses so much. You know, just like that. Nothing big, but enough to give him a run. And he cracks him with a good left hook. Some stage now, Dave, you got to wonder about the frustrating factor for Barrera, who's, you know, controls most of his fights and he's not controlling this fight and being picked apart here by a guy that just knocked him down two rounds earlier. Yeah, he comes in, he touches him up with the left hand, nothing big, but he's scoring punches. A lot of accuracy. And there's the left hook again by Andre. Right hand lands. There's the bell. That's a warm round. Get frustrated. All you have to do is stay on top of your game now. Hear me? He's very funny. Now listen, quick pulling the head away, okay? Keep it off center over the shoulder, quick pulling it away, okay? Do that. When you're on the ropes, 
set a trap for him. But let him commit to keep everything tight and close up, okay? With that lead leg and lead hand, okay? Now you're starting to put them together. Don't reach over your feet with your jab where you gotta come back in position. Just what you said when he caught him with that hand upstairs, set the trap, and that's what his corner wants him to do. Now we move to the sixth round here. I've got Andre Ward unofficially out in front in this fight. He gave Ward the first round of Herrera in the second round, and then it's been all Ward. Ward had the knockdown in the third round, and I thought he outboxed him in four and five, and now here we are in the sixth round. One thing we have not seen from Andre Ward is ring rush. Yeah, very, very important that you mention that, Dave. I wish I thought of myself, but as long as you go, then there's absolutely no ring rust. And this, this was what we had to find out in this fight. Very important uh, comment, Dave. And the last fight was in June, and not many fights over recent times, and he looks fresh. Yeah, his legs look good, his, his punches are shot, no ring rust whatsoever. That's a great point. And a note to, to mention that, that going into the fight to talk about ring rust. Continues to just keep the jab out there and win the situations where not much is happening. His ward. There he is trying to set the trap for the right hand now. What is so slick? And it is. Gets him to come in, gets the Barrera to come in. Controls too hard, punches and knows how to tie him up. Halfway through now, the sixth round. Wood, Wood's hand speed has been fine. Barrera, you know, is a natural light heavyweight. And so far, he hasn't shown more power than Andre Ward because the hand speed of Ward is uh, so sensational. Yeah, they're, they're a great apart to hand speed, and it makes a difference with uh, Ward's punches getting there first and then him getting in and then getting out. You know, when you see Ward box like this, you know, now you, you get the case for, you know, pound and pound. Of course, that's not going to happen for him until, you know, he fights Kovala. Which again, we, we reiterate, he probably won't be his next fight. Yeah, but he'll get people excited about that fight now if this continues. Because Kovalo has had a hard time finding marquee opponents. He had to fight Pascal twice. Yeah, he, this is somebody that could be developed, uh, that rivalry nurtured all year. And uh, it's a great division, the light heavyweight division. If we can get it down to Stevenson to fight somebody, yeah? That's what uh, Kovalev was objecting to. They were working on that for a while. Now, here's another round that, you know, Ward has done just exactly what his corner told him to do. Just outbox this guy. And that's just what he did in the sixth round. Not by much, but just enough so the judges saw that. Judges, by the way, uh, Bill Lurch from Illinois. Steve Morrow from California, old friend Pat Russell from California. Obviamente, porque estamos aquí, vamos a decir que está ganando los rounds there, ¿ok? Ahora es cuando tenemos que cada oportunidad que tenga tenemos que ser efectivos. No podemos esperar. Okay? Evil Sanchez, a very experienced corner man. We're in the corner with the Virgil Hunter telling his charge: don't throw wild punches. But fighters do that because they're fighters. It's an emotional experience out there. You're going to throw punches uh, that are not technically sound and there's going to be a lot of rising to situations but he is you know Pereira is just walking into a school assassin right here uh, Andre Ward is really so sharp and on his game and, and patient and it's so important that you mentioned the sharpness and how smart he is in there waiting his opportunity 
at that. I mean, his chin almost touched the canvas bending over. That's what the kind of condition he's in and the kind of balance that this guy has. <laughs> Making Barrera miss. He misses himself. Then look how he gets right back into the action, right into an angle and moves to his left and then gets his jab in. Yeah, he does all that adjustment. And Dave, he doesn't give, his, he doesn't give Barrera any chance to, to reset because he comes right back. I mean, he was off balance. He had missed the punch. And then he's right on top of him again to the left hand downstairs. Barrera trying to land as best he can. I mean, he's making this a very interesting fight, but he's just not able to land accurate punches with the movement and quickness as a short inside. You can hardly see it. First right hand landed uh, off the right hand of Ward that time on the inside. As you Barrera, you throw the punch, you see a target, and somehow you miss by two inches all the time. If Ward has gotten out of the way or moved. I mean, is Ward controlling the distance outside? And then when they go inside, he's throwing, throwing, throwing. Making it so difficult for Barrera. Well, you get the idea with that. Oh, man, I want to throw this right hand so bad. And when he does, Ward makes a miss. See, there's a whole bunch of punches. But a whole bunch of open lands except the left hand of Ward. And then when Ward lands a good enough right hand, it's enough of a payback that Barrera has to think twice about launching. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's go. You can't just walk in and throw. I like that comment by Kaiz Senior. He asked the fighters to stop throwing because the back was turned. He says, thank you, gentlemen. I like uh, uh, both his, his, he and his son. The terrific referees here in the state of California. Guerrero trying to force something here now on the inside. Let's see how Ward handles this a little bit of pressure. But as I say, that Barrero walks off. Andre catches him with a nice stiff jab between the gloves. Faints with the right hand, catches him with another left hand. Andre, a little bit of puckiness uh, underneath the right eye. Nice exchange that time. Barrero landed something on the inside there. But it's got to be frustrating because look at the way he makes a miss. And right at the end of him, Ward lands two punches. Don't get hooked up with a headbutt. You're Barrera, you throw five punches, you land two, and then Ward clocks you with two. Yeah, man. I got this thing with, you know, eight, nine, ten. 11 and 12 to go. 69, 63 in favor of Andre. Uh, okay. okay. No, no es posible que usted lo esté dejando trabajar el primero. Usted tiene que trabajar. Este pasito para la derecha aquí, el gancho. Regresa el gancho, por favor. I need you to do that. All right? And I need you to well, keep turning. Quit showing you the pain. Look, every time you're confused, you're landing clean shots. Watch Ward, it's all about the speed. Number nine. I block one, I land one. Then I come back up, I block, see it coming, partially deflected, and I get my hook in. You know, you see that in slow motion, it's like that was planned, but I mean, it's unbelievable in, in real time that he's able to execute that as we move to round number eight here at the Oracle in Oakland, California. Sullivan Barrera, the undefeated kid from Cuba. Huge amateur pedigree, and of course, uh, Andre Ward, not a bad uh, Olympic uh, gold medalist himself as an amateur, and a undefeated professional himself at uh, 28 no coming into this one, moving up for the first time in the light heavyweight division. And the insurgence of Andre Ward in the light heavyweight division with Kovalov, all world, is going to really be something for these guys. Well, it's a great thing about boxing, Dave. You know, four or five times a year, we just get that fight you really want to see. Yep, you really do it, and you have to, uh, you know, set it up. And, uh, you know, they, they were saying with uh, with Kovalev and, and Stevenson, you, know, you let it marinate too long, you don't get it. This one, we're going to try to get it all done this year. But the big thing was how Ward looked tonight. You know what you're going to get with Kovalev. And, and Ward has shown himself as a guy up to this point that you want to see in that matchup with Kovalev. Because the HBO network would love to have, if this continues the way it is, would love to have Ward fight him right away. But uh, 
you know, Ward is too smart for that. He's, you know, he's coming off a long layoff, and he wants another fight before he before he fights Kovalev. And Kovalev may take one too. The Kovalev will, I'm sure, so because he's summer, that, you know. Yeah. So, so let them let them no, set no, up, no, let no, them no, come no. to each other's no. fights in the summertime. And it could happen in November, December. November 19 is the date that's being thrown around as a as a possible one. So all that's in the air. But for Ward, the key thing was to justify all that uh, with his performance here. No, the key thing is you and I are there to call it. <laughs> that's the second piece. I think he did say that. That's right. So anyway, round number eight continues, and it's more of Ward just outboxing this guy. Ferreira hasn't turned it up a notch. So it doesn't seem to be any sense of urgency to get cracked again. But Raul Caiz says no. But he's called timeout. That message will be sent anyway. That was a vicious low blow, son. Get over here. He said to... Uh, He's going to take a point away because it was a vicious low blow. Crowd doesn't like it. But one point off. Está bien. Okay, se da la mano y ya no estén ya no entran ni con chingaderas. No more. No more. Time in. Let's go. Box. My time is back in. So a vicious low blow, as called by Ruiz Caiz uh, Senior. Raul Caiz, nothing, you know, nothing intentional, but it's a, it's a foul, it's still a low blow. And the key word there was vicious as he saw the impact. And the thing is that it's not going to help Barrera much because it won't be a 10-8 round because Barrera hasn't won the round. Ward, Ward has won the round 10-9. But then he loses a point, so it's a 9-9 round. Me at range, quit slinging the punches, okay? And quit slinging them at distance, okay? When you got him on the back foot, he's going back square. That's when you want to work. But you go tap, tap, bend the glove, tap the glove, tap the glove. Tap the glove, accurate right, quit dipping. Take a look, okay? at, Take a look at how it happens here. Keep him up, Andre, keep him up. Come on now. It already happened just inside. left hand underneath there and it may have been a product of positioning yeah, it was like i said it wasn't intentional but it was vicious and it was low so now you said yeah i'm gonna take a point away for that and hey he had a point to give i get it 78 72 four rounds to go we're in the early portion of round number nine and that's on official scoring again the official judges are uh, bill Lurch from illinois Steve uh, Morrow from California and Pat Russell also from California now you don't expect it to impact Ward too much but with some fighters it would take away that area just above the bottom uh, of the body right over the top of the trunks because they don't want to get caught for that same shot again well but Ward is too experienced for that Barrera now there seems to be more of a sense of urgency now for him. He said that it was bad that he was hanging on to him, but uh, Ward wasn't going to allow him to just drape himself over there. And now it's getting a little, as they say in hockey, a little chippy, huh? Yes. Ward with a jab back in the face of uh, Barrera. Hey, if you get hit low, it's not enough in your mind that they took a point. I mean, you're still feeling the pain. Yeah. And now he could have taken more time if he was really hurting. Or maybe he just wanted a rest. I don't know. He caught him pretty good, though. Barrera missing shots, and still the accuracy of Andre Ward in the black box. Smacks it with the right hand, very quick to bounce back on the outside. Misses with the left hand. Barrera able to tie him up. Barrera is slick. Watch his low blows. He does it on the outside of the uh, referee. Uh, he's slick. Up, he ties up with the right hand and fires low with the left. 
more or less catches him on the hip, but uh, he knows what he's doing in there. And the free and less than a minute to go here there. in the night. And again, Ward doing just enough to take these uh, points and, and, and win these rounds. He's making Barrera miss so much. Each round is up its own stop. competition. Oh, How you look at you break it down round by round. Oh, Tell win one at a time. You know, uh, Barrera is trying to throw that right hand, and Andre is able to get his left hand up there to block it. Then he flips him again. Every time he doesn't stop throwing punches until he gets a piece of him. A little south of the border there too. Not in the area of the liver, but below the dump line. But that was on the outside of the referee as well. And with the trunks being a little bit high for Barrera, yes, I want those ten seconds to stop the bell. Seems like at the end of every round, Wood does something to just kind of an exclamation Solomon, point. That, you know, I won this round, by the way, judges. You're all right. I want you to focus on this job here. Okay, let's keep it clean, baby. Let's not get caught with a head butter. Keep them punches up. Come on. To me. Settle down. Quit being wild at what you're doing. You're fighting at a good pace, a relaxed pace, and that's okay. But you have another level. You don't let anything come into your head to stop you from your mission. You understand? But you be alert. You do it smart, you do it crafty, and you do it credit your life. You understand? Okay, we're good to go, brother. Now, I'm not asking you to be foolish, but I believe you right there for the right shot. Virgil uh, has been with him. Virgil Hunt has been with him since he was nine years old, uh, training him, and he knows his fighter. And kind of inspirational at the same time, no panic in that corner whatsoever. On the other side, um, Sullivan Guerrero's corner, no panic either, but Abel Sanchez knows that his fighter now is getting to the area where he's almost going to knock Ward out to win this fight, or at least drop him a couple of times. And Abel's been around long enough to realize that not looking like it's going to happen, so he's got to get his charge juiced up a little bit more. And literally for Barrera, throw caution to the wind and hope to do something to catch Ward. The uppercut, try to get Ward to come to you. But when you're you're trailing and you're in this situation, place to be. Well, it's so tough for Barrera because he's not used to losing rounds like this, and. You know, he's just getting out of box, and it's very, very frustrating for a guy that is usually controlling things in there. I mean, just that, that simple jab that as he's coming in, he gets hit right now up in the forehead, and uh, it moves him back. Now he's giving it to uh, Andre Ward again. I'm not quite sure what that was about. He was uh, crossing him against headbutt, leaning in with his head. Uh, the only time I saw him use any any time at all with his head was when he was being tied up with the arm wrapped around by Sullivan Barrera and he, he leapt up that time but that's the only time I've seen him move his head in any questionable manner as the left took just just got Barrera off balance so I mean there is considerable power because you know in the early going I thought that that it was clear that Barrera was stronger but Ward is so much quicker that he has this guy off balance all the time and then with the footwork, he's able to move to the sides, set up good hard shots for the body. See him double up with the hook to the body and the head. Well, he's a real opportunist. And he's certainly taking advantage of the opportunities that he has. Barrero was down in the third round. And a shot right on the temple bone. Other than that, it's been just out boxing this guy. Now he's uh, seemed really concerned about the heads coming together as the fatigue factor sets in for both fighters. And what Ward has done is that he's defeated the human nature of, okay, a bigger guy is coming at you, your instinct is to back up. He either goes side to side or he goes toward Barrera. And also at the same time, that being said, some and blood coming leaders. out of the left eye of Ward. Keep our eye on that between rounds. 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 
A battle to the bell. Stop at the bell. Time. I don't know. Barrera had a better round, but did he win the round, Dave? I don't think so. There's Andre Kovalev, uh, brother Sergey uh, Kovalev. He said, look, look. Here, here's the ring right here. I thought Ward still won that, even though it was a better round for Barrera. I get 98-90 going to the championship round. There's that cut up uh, below the eyebrow on the left side. When he makes a big effort, I'm not asking you to go go home for him, but I'm telling you he's open. What does his punches feel like now? Huh? Hey. What do his punches feel like? Regular. Huh? Leaning in. Jab comes in. Heads come in. And right there, came up and nailed him. And right after that, we saw the blood coming out of Ward's eye. Key thing, though, is that was not called initially as the headbutt that we see. There were two headbutts there, two accidental headbutts. When Barrera came in first, now there's an urgency now of Barrera. Abel Sanchez told me to knock this guy out. But look who gets off. As soon as Barrera gets aggressive, Ward just picks up the pace a little bit more. And the veterans can sense the, the desperation last push from an opponent. And Ward knows that that's what Barrera's trying to launch into. Now what he's going to do is step around him, pull him in and step around him. Don't let his back get caught in the ropes because he... You know, Dave, you, you were right too about something you pointed out around or so about... He doesn't back straight up. He comes out to the side or he, or he comes forward when Ferreira tries to put pressure on him. But he doesn't back straight up at ever. He gets his angle by moving to the side and throwing more punches. I'm Barrera. I'm so frustrated right now fighting this guy because Stop. he's just been Stop. a master boxer Break. in this deep one. Breath, deep breath. And oh, you know that you're Barrera, you've just missed on so many occasions. So many good shots that you think that you launched. And they didn't miss by much. But they missed because this guy is so cagey. He's cagey in that he he'll touch a hand when it comes in. He has a, the way of, of uh, taking his watch right hands, hand and putting hands. his thumb down and moving your left hand when you're down low. But throwing his left hand high to parry off the right hand when it comes in on him. I mean, these are slick defensive things that Andre Ward does that go unnoticed. And this is why, if you're Barrero, you've got to be throwing two, three punches at a time so that maybe the back end of the combination will land. He's throwing one, and it's getting blocked. Well, there's a couple of things. Number one that you mentioned, no ring rust whatsoever on Ward. Number two, he's got enough power because he dropped it Barrera early in the fight, so he can contest at 175. He doesn't have to cut weight as much. He probably walks around the streets at about 190 and getting down to 75. A whole lot easier on his body than 168, so he feels stronger. So let's say he fights again in June, July, and then maybe something in uh, in November. It would be the Kovalev fight. At least that's what they're talking about. He'll be the number one contender should it continue for the uh, next three minutes of 24, 23, 22 seconds. Yeah, he's number four right now on Barrero one, so he'll jump up there into that position. Well, this is an elimination fight, so, you know, there'll be a mandatory involved here. Can we give uh, Sullivan a uh, mercy round? I haven't scored 107 to 100 as we get ready to move to the 12th and final round with uh, Andre Ward out in front. By the way, I gave that last round to Barrera. Nothing wrong with uh, that. He, if you get a couple. Make him pay for a mistake. 
Take a quick look at the summary of the fight. A minute and 20 seconds in a round three. Barrera went down from a left hook to the top of the head in the uh, late in round eight. One point was deducted from Andre Ward from a low blow, but I've got Ward out in front. Most people thought that this fight would go the distance because you get two really good boxes in there. And it's it's played to form, but we've seen uh, Barrera acquit himself well, just not able to catch up to Ward. Andre has a free and we've seen the Ward get back, really Andre. capitalize on a guy that doesn't have the same speed as he does. Oh, stop! Stop! One of the first time I've seen in the fight that these has actually had to uh, separate the two. And it was Ward that was hanging on, so maybe he felt some of that power. Instead, he goes right back, throws his straight right hand down there. He's not going to settle for this. He's going to fight right till the end. Is Andre Ward. He'd love to have a knockout in this uh, fight if he possibly can. Put an exclamation point on what he's done. And he has done a great job of boxing. Been quicker, slicker. Watch your feet. We're not going to spin. The speed of him quicker. But Barrera, a frustrating fight. He looks strong when he's really going. The only round that I've given Barrera in the fight was round number two, and I gave him the 11th round. So I thought it was one of his better rounds in the fight, and not convinced it. He should have got that, but I gave it to him anyway. Minute and a half to go in the fight. No, no, no talking, no talking. Still not the uh, urgency that I would expect from Sullivan, knowing that he's behind in the fight. Ward hanging right in there, willing to mix with the guy. Right hand is through any time Andre does anything, the crowd comes to life here. People beginning to stand, and this place is jammed. Now, one wheel of a crowd here in the Oregon. Yeah, both of their next fights will be interesting. A, because of where Ward is going, and B, I'd be curious to see how much Ferreira learns from this comeuppance given by Andre Ward, this boxing lesson, how that will change him and how he'll be able to try and adjust in future fights. Do you think that Barrera might earn the shot to fight Kovalov in his next fight, even though he doesn't win this, just to see what he, if Kovalov uh, handles him the same way that uh, Ward does? Well, he is hooked up with the right people. Yeah, certainly. Kathy Duva manages both of them. Get your hand on Andre. Pull your left hand back. But Hands are free. That's all speculation 15 seconds from now. Ward with just a little mouse underneath the uh, left eye. Only a few seconds left now in this fight. And Ward ties him up. As the bell and ends the fight. With all the urgency, I thought Ward won the last round. Score to 117, 109 in favor of Andre Ward. Judges Bill Lurch from Illinois, Steve Mark, California, Pat Russell. So we'll have to wait and see how they see it. I got Ward winning this fight handily. The heavy hands of Guerrero against the quicker hands of Andre Ward and the quicker hands prevail. And the ring smarts. And uh, everything else that has made uh, Ward uh, special. But for him, this is a really good stage to have this kind of a performance. What uh, What do you suppose uh, uh, Kovalev's thinking tonight? I'm Turn glad that he came through with this because Ward is a big name as opposed to Barrera. So this uh, enhances the probability of their payday. And, so, and I think for Kathy Duva, who manages both of these fighters, she can get them to fight on the network for Kovalev and Barrera. It's a good fight. To, you know, heading into the Andre Ward fight, to see who he can get a fight with. Hey, what, what else is Barrera going to get? But but this. So this is a, a good step for him, and it, it's a good way to get it all out there and showcase and uh, and build some demands for that fight. Have that tell, sir, please. Thank you. Most important thing, no ring rust. It'll be important to find out uh, uh, just exactly how uh, Ward comes out of this in terms of his knee and his shoulder. And the cut. Yeah, well, the, cuts, the cut I don't think is a, a, a major problem. So uh, 
in our preliminary fight, uh, a terrific featherweight fight. We saw Joseph Diaz Jr. win a unanimous decision victory in a really good boxing match over Jason Velez. A terrific fight. And earlier fights, uh, Daniel Franco uh, was able to handle uh, the veteran uh, Herman Maraz by his uh, eighth round TKO. And in our first fight of the evening, Junior Yunan uh, able to defeat Christian Solzano by unanimous decision. While we wait for the results, uh, our executive producer, Frank Belmont, our producer tonight, Jason Beidel, our statisticians, Tammy Cotell, and Stephen Belmont, and again, our stage manager, Joel Parkstein. And we thank everybody for helping us out, get us ready for this fight, one and all. So we just wait to make it official, and then I believe we're going to be able to hang around for the interview. Max Kellerman of HBO Sports in the United States. I suspect we'll interview Andre Ward, so it'll be interesting to hear what he says, and I expect at some stage they'll ask him about Kovalev, and we'll see what uh, Andre has to say specifically about that. I already know the answer, and I've told you folks during the telecast. All right, Michael Buffer seems to be moving into position, and we'll have uh, the official rendition as uh, the Curry celebrates. That was the knockdown that happened early in the fight. That temple shot from Andre Ward. When you stop and think about it, for it could have been a better, a better test or a better night for Andre. Here's Michael Buffer moving into position. And we will have this for you. Here we go. No problem with Michael's microphone. Now it seems to be coming up. Here's Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to Nobody's working the uh, microphone for Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Pat Russell scores the contest 117-109. Steve Morrow has it, 119-109. And Bill Lurch scores it, 117-108. All to the winner by unanimous decision, the fighting pride of Oakland, California, still undefeated. Andre. So nice and wide, just like we thought. There was flashes, there were moments when we thought he might put his foot on the pedal. Barry, one or two moments, even in the 11th round. You just, you just want, just go on, go on, Andre, you say, go on. <laughs> 